Hi, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video series, we are going to begin the Oracle SQL. As we may know, like Oracle is an organization which deals with the number of softwares nowadays and basically the most important part of that Oracle is the database. So, in this video tutorial, we will see how can we install the Oracle SQL database and how can we start working on that. So, before getting started with the Oracle, let's find out what this database is all about and why do we need it. You may have come across a number of websites which ask you details like email ID, mobile number and the sites like Facebook and maybe some other profile or community sites ask so many details from you. Later, when you log in, you can use the same username and password which you have used while uh, filling up the form and you will find all of your details like your pictures, the uh, videos you shared or anything. So basically all these things are stored somewhere in the backend in which the user cannot make a direct interaction because user generally makes the interaction with the user interfaces that is the UI, maybe the web page, maybe the mobile application you are dealing with. But all the data is actually stored somewhere in the backend called the database. So this database actually provides the permanent storage of the data. So when we talk about storing the data, the data is actually stored in a tabular way and all the data is related to each other. For example, if I am talking about the database of a company like Tutorials Point, so here the tutorials and the writers who write those tutorials, the video tutorials, all are somewhere related to each other and will be stored, the data will be stored in the tabular way. But in the database, table is not the only thing which is stored as it may have the number of different types of object for the different purposes. So like here, I just talked about the tables. We may get something like views, indexes, synonyms, procedures, functions, which you will find in this video tutorial. Different objects have the different roles to perform. Like table goal is to store the data. Similarly, if I'll talk about the views, it will be used to restrict the data. Maybe if I'll, if I'll talk about the triggers, it will do some validation or maybe some implicit, will take some implicit actions. So basically, each and every database objects have a different role to perform. So basically in database, it refers to the related set of data and the way it is organized. So once we have the database, obviously we should have something which will help us out to interact with the database. And in that sense, we will talk about the DBMS, that is Database Management System. So Database Management System is basically a way to interact with the databases. As here, DBMS is a computer software application that interacts with the user or other applications to capture and analyze data. For example, there is a database, I want to access the database directly, maybe if I am a DBA. I can sit on the database server, can start fetching the data directly. But generally what we do, this database would be accessed by some application. Like I just give an example of Facebook. The data is stored in the database, but that Facebook application is actually retrieving the information from the database. So this is all possible because of this DBMS. So this DBMS is designed to allow the definition, creation, querying, update and administration of database. Definition means if you want to create a new table or any database object that is the creation definition and, and similarly you can create the uh, database objects. Once you have de uh, defined some objects like table or maybe some and you have stored the data, you can query that. You can update the structure or the data and you can administer like you can uh, pass some validations, you can set some privileges to the different set of users and all. So these are all can be possible because of this uh, DBMS. Data sharing, data security, data integration, data access are some major advantages of data DBMS that is data sharing. If you want to share your data, 
secure putting the security in data integration and accessing the data so all that thing those things can be done with the help of the dbms but nowadays the dbms which we are working is our dbms that is relational database management system basically this model is launched by dr ef cord so basically he wrote 12 rules on for, and if any database will follow those rules would be a rdbms all right so this is a relational model means each and every object in the database will be related to each other our aim purpose is to provide a declarative method for specifying the data and query and whenever you will work with the most of the rdbms databases available you will have to use the sql as the query language sql which stands for structured query language is basically a standard language using which you can access almost all the rdbms nowadays yes of course there will be a bit difference in each and every sql like maybe the function name will be different something in oracle will be having a different name in maybe ms sql server so some basic changes will be there but overall the language uh, outline is going to be same and we are going to work with the sql so let's have a quick look what this sql is all about so as i just said sql stands for structured query language it is designed by donald chamberlin and raymond boyce in 1974 so initially it was used to uh, retrieve the data from some of the databases but since this language is very easy to learn it is almost like a english language so that's why it is categorized also in the fourth generation of language fourth generation language uh, which is basically very much english type language like we used to talk to each other if i say something like delete from employees so even if you are not familiar with the sql you are getting actually what i uh, mean if i am saying delete what does that mean so this is as simple so its basic purpose is to uh, it is a special purpose language designed for managing data in rdbms using this sql command you can do different types of action like you can create the new database object you can insert the data you can update the data retrieve the data you can delete the data you can drop the structure of the table or you can do anything right like allowing the user to get some privilege revoking those privileges each and everything can be done using this sql that is structured query language but as i just uh, listed many of the tasks that we can do using sql we can actually categorize them as per their commands so here we have the five major aspects of the sql five major classifications of the sql that is the ddl that is data definition language data manipulation language data retrieval language data control language and transaction control language so let's uh, have a basic idea of each data definition language means any sql command which is actually used to de uh, define some database object like if i am going to create a table a view an index or anything i am adding a new object i am adding something new in the database so if any sql command is affecting the structure or the information of database i will categorize them in the data definition language in our further videos we will of course give a, a deeper look in each of these segments data manipulation language once you have created the table now what you will have to insert some data when you insert or manipulate some data it doesn't affect the structure of database but yes it does affect the structure of the table like if i'm entering a new record one new record is added in the table if i'm updating some data is going to change when i'm deleting some rows are going to removed so this is the data manipulation language when any sql uh, statement will affect the data inside a table i will categorize it inside the dml now once we have the data we can start retrieving that so that part will be deal with the 
uh, data retrieval language or data query language maybe in some database, databases. Data control language. This data control language actually deals with the uh, accessibility like if I'm working in a centralized database and there are number of users who can access the same database, I will have to specify the goal. For example, uh, I should not say goal, basically I should, uh, I should say roles. So when we have the different set of users and all are working in a centralized database, each user would be having a different role, means that role will be defining like how much a user can access. Even I can access a Google database through Gmail, but I can only check my mail. So somewhere I'm getting restriction. So that is what we can do right here. If there is some user who are in admin level, I will obviously allow them to create a table. They can access all the data from the table. But if there is some uh, third user, third party user type uh, uh, user is there, then I will only give some view of the data means uh, some particular things can be retrieved by some set of users. Transaction control language. Transaction control language simply means when I'm executing a number of SQL statements altogether, then I should take care of that transaction. Maybe if I'm uh, transferring some amount from my account to my friend's account, so there will be a couple of uh, uh, SQL statements will be required. For, for example, First of all, I will update my account balance, will deduct some amount, then the amount of my friend's account will be added. So there are a couple of uh, update statements or any particular statement, any DML statement is gonna uh, execute. But this transaction control language will ensure us like if it is getting successful, both the commands or all the commands participating in a transaction will execute successfully. Otherwise, if there is something wrong, obviously the whole transaction will be rolled back, not the half or some percentage of the transaction will be successful. Either it will be fully successful or fully failed. So these are the different classifications of SQL. Now, let's have an introduction of Oracle. As in the beginning, I told that nowadays it is a developed organization, but here, the, it is founded by Larry Ellison with Bob Miner and Ed Oates in 1977. Basically, Oracle was initially just a product on which Larry Ellison was working along with the Bob Miner and Ed Oates. Basically, he was working on the RDBMS rules written by EF Cod, and the product which he created, he named it Oracle. Later, he founded an organization with the same name and nowadays the Oracle deals with the databases, middlewares, business apps, development software, file system, operating system and so many more things. But uh, as I said earlier, database is the first and the vastest product of Oracle. And here in this particular video tutorial, we are going to work with the Explits edition of 11G. So in our next video, we'll see how can we install the Express in our system and later we'll start working on it.